We're joined by the uh, Liberal candidate for the seat of Mildura at Saturday's state election, Paul Matheson. Paul, how's it going today? Yeah, really good up here in Mildura. Very sunny, so uh, hopefully another great day on Prepol. Yes, well, I wonder who it will be a great day for in the seat of Mildura itself and indeed for the Andrews Labor government. The uh, polling on Thursday released by the Herald Sun indicates that uh, it could be a minority government. It could even see Daniel Andrews lose his own seat with a lot of candidates running there. There's a lot running in your seat. Uh, What do you make of that analysis and the possibility of a minority government? I think the, our focus is winning the seat of Muldura. And if you look at those polls, they're normally fairly left-leaning. So it's excellent news as far as I'm concerned. Uh, at least people are starting to wise up to the Labor government. And um, what we do is we intend on winning the seat of Muldura, so um, not having a minority government. Yes, because it's quite clear, obviously, as a member of the Liberal Party, you'd be in coalition. Uh, there'd be no mystery about who you support, whereas uh, we don't know which way Ali Kappa will go, uh, do we? Or has she made public statements about which way she'd go if there was a minority government? No, she keeps on banging on about a hung parliament. I think we need to look at um, what's the best things for our community, and that is uh, a coalition win, where we've actually got a seat at the table where we can make decisions and have the input in relation to real policy and real solutions for regional Victoria. Well, I noticed the um, incumbent independent that is Ali Cup has talked about a number of things that have been delivered in her view in the electorate, but certainly one we focused on when these pandemic powers were being debated. We asked her questions at the time about, she was saying Victoria's regions, particularly Mildura, needed an out, an exemption from the lockdowns that were happening. She claimed Daniel Andrews had said he'd given her a commitment that there would be such an out provided. None was provided, and then she was, uh, you know, calling out that the government had let her down. I think she was hoodwinked, in my view. Oh, I think that's that's one of many issues we had in that one size doesn't fit all. We were locked down, and we had border restrictions when we didn't actually have one single COVID case. Now, as you know, a lot of our industries are outside too, so yeah, you know, that's just absolutely ridiculous. We were locked down; kids couldn't go to school, and we couldn't even play community sports. So, I'm very strong in. There'll be no more lockdowns and we'll keep schools open and um, we'll repeal the uh, stupid pandemic legislation that was pushed through. Yeah, it did have a major impact for border communities, especially those that couldn't go back and forth. Even the Murrayville Footy Club had all sorts of headaches trying to get across to play in the Mallee League, which has now folded, maybe even partially because of the way governments, various state governments handled people on the fringes of their states. Oh, most definitely. Um, you know, we were quite innovative up here and we had the same issue. I'm the president of Sunraiser Football and Netball League and we actually took our games across to New South Wales. We couldn't play uh, community sport in Mildura. Uh, we took it over to the over the river, a few minutes over the river, and we could actually have crowds. So it just shows how silly it is. And, um, you know, just because uh, we've got a river there doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a border and... Uh, hard lockdowns. Yeah, we commented quite a bit on that on the Friday sports show here on Flow FM because we could see that uh, the bizarre situation where it's the same virus, the same number of cases, but New South Wales was allowing larger crowd capacities than Victoria was, which had a real problem, you know, when it comes to even the clubs and the communities that rely on the funds that are raised at the club and spent in the community, that all went into New South Wales. And it did, and we had kids from New South Wales coming to coming over here to school or the supermarket, and uh, you know it, it was ridiculous both ways. Like I don't think anyone understands the impact it had on our uh, rural communities and just the mental health that we're going to be feeling for, for our kids and their, you know their school results. And, you know, this is a long-term thing from uh, an unnecessary overreach by the government. Now, speaking of the long-term, Paul Matheson, Liberal candidate for Mildura, you're a police officer yourself. Just on the law and order front, has there any, been anything pledged by the opposition in the seat of Mildura in that area? Or indeed, what are your observations on the ground being involved in it? Uh, my observations is law and order is very strong for regional and country people. We've been let down for way too long. Uh, so we need more police in regional areas. We need people to understand what country policing is about, especially around livestock and, and uh, theft and stuff like that. It's really something that we talk about, but we don't really put much effort into. Um, so, you know, I think we get left behind a bit. So crime is a massive issue for regional Victoria, and we have some of the highest crime rates up here in Sunraysia. Now, there comes a point where we can't keep accepting a rise in crime and keep on saying it's great people are reporting crime. There comes a a time where you have to say, okay, enough's enough. Why isn't our our strategies or what's not working for our community? 
Is there a case there, or is it for about early intervention with those that are, I guess, have their first or second encounter with the law, or is it also about soft targets? Some farmers are targeted uh, maybe while they're away uh, for the assets to be stolen from the farm, including diesel, among other things. I, I think so. I think that you see the livestock, you know, the increase in prices and how expensive fuel is, they do become easy targets because everyone's busy and obviously the, the distance between towns and how isolated places are. Um, so it comes back to, you know, the farmers are, are great neighbours and they talk and stuff like that, but um, they don't normally or they can't report um, thefts as quickly as people in the city can and they don't get a response as quick as people in the city. So it's something that's um, been bubbling away for quite a while. Um, we're resilient people in the country, but we need a service as well. Yeah, that's right. And when it comes to reporting crime, the Victoria does have these sort of rural crime units or whatever else, or is there a need for more resourcing in that so that when it's farmers or regional communities report that sort of livestock or diesel or other theft, uh, they because often the complaint from police is, well, we need early reporting and sometimes farmers don't even realise it's happened. Maybe they're even embarrassed that they've lost a bit of livestock and they don't report. Yeah, there's that. And it's also police having the expertise. Um, you know, some of the, it's quite technical, some of the stuff. And, you know, we get a lot of police from the city and they've got no idea what, what type of sheep it is or, you know, all the stuff and how the markets work. Um, wool, for example. Um, chemicals uh, theft is a huge problem in Sunraysia, especially for our table grapes and um, our citrus properties. So it's about having the right experts out there. And you can't pull them, um, pull them out of different areas and... Um, you know, a Band-Aid solution. It needs to be something similar to what New South Wales got, and they've got designated livestock squads in the regions. Mm, absolutely. Hey, Paul, just before you go, I just wanted to check in on the high river or flooding that's been happening. Uh, the last I looked, there was no red on the map of where there were alerts on, but, of course, Mildura facing some major inundation potentially. Has the state government been adequately prepared and active for the Mildura community about the water coming down? I don't think so. We've been talking about this for weeks. We saw the devastation around Shepherd and and uh, Chuka, and we knew the water was coming. Uh, Council have you know start to put levies in. Some have already given way. I uh, haven't seen much uh, state government response to it. We're sort of lucky. We're a little bit elevated, mostly around Mildura. Won't impact us as much as what people think. Um, but yeah, I think you know on the back of what we've seen, the devastation. Um, you know, around uh, the eastern Victoria and stuff like that, I think the government should be stepping up a lot more than what they are. Um, we're lucky, and, and this is just another thing. It's what is it? Fires, floods, <laughs> what's next? COVID. Um, yep. Yeah, we, that's why we can't um, continue with this overreach. Um, yep. We need, need to get things done. Yeah, that's right. And thankfully, it's a sunny day today down there at Pre-Poll where you're meeting with the voters. I'll let you get back to that. Paul Matheson, your Liberal candidate for Mildura at the state election on Saturday. Thanks for joining us on Flow. No, I appreciate your time.